Oh. We're live. Hey, everybody. Hi, Welcome. Phil. Hey. Nice <laughs> yeah, when I start this up, I don't know. Like, Zoom seems to be in a, it says live, I hear, but. Uh, okay. Does it? Because I don't see us being on. Yeah. It it, Hi, Phil. Okay. There we go. I hear uh, me on your screen. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a distinct delay uh, when you do that. Oh, I see it now. And then there's that strange black screen that starts everything. Yeah, yeah I know. That. I was trying to figure out how to get rid of that. Like, what a horror. Like, you think Zoom would, like, I just to have something the better. Black screen I'll, I'll upload a it. photo, anything. I mean, geez, something. So they just put that up for us. Okay. Yeah, it's almost like it's grabbing, like, the first, you know, second of whatever it is. Because it's weird. It looks like, like someone's talking, like it's highlighted the one black box. You so know, not you know, attractive. Know. I don't think I would click on that. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. Well, that's why I wanted to do the, the YouTube ones look nice because you could add that photo in and, you know, they all just look the same. Well, yeah, let's figure that out. That would be nice. If we yeah, I, try, I, I looked. I mean, I'll keep looking. I, I just can't. I, I hadn't seen a way to do it, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking. Are so you have, still full from yesterday? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did have some that kale's home for breakfast. <laughs> oh, did you? Oh, we always used to do that. I, know. I um I did not stop at my Hari Hachi Boo. For those of you who know what that is, I way past my Hari Hachi Boo. Oh my gosh, we were so full. Frank and I just were like, oh. <laughs> And it's funny because I talk Why? about I talk about that like you know I try not to overeat I try not to do you know, do it too much yeah and, uh, yeah then given the opportunity I ate way too much <laughs> and I am looking it's just forward so good we had I a know, feast it was. We had well a not feast. only that but there's so much like you want to I want to try, try everything, everything. Right. I don't think I had uh, I don't know if I had seconds. I think I did have seconds on something, but uh, I mean, I'm, you know, when you try nine things. I mean, how, you know, how much? How much? Okay, so eat? I had your call zone to start when we were still in the kitchen. It was so good, everybody. This is coming. I we think we're gonna perfect it by Christmas. I mean, I think it's pretty perfect. <laughs> Yeah, I I'd like to tweak it. I'm going to make it a few yeah. more times, but a little uh, yeah. bit. Like yeah. you said, it was a little like it could be fill, filled, maybe double the regat. Yeah, well, and, that, and again, that was because I made the eggplant too, and I made a double batch, so the eggplant oh, was good. the focus, and then that was kind of whatever was left over, you know. But so it was thin. We're we're, we're used to the the three inch <laughs> the three inch thick pieces. Our dad used to make it like this. So what we do? What you want to tell? You made it. It's. It's usually stuffed with so much ricotta cheese and then mixed with our sausage crumbles. But like when we were kids, they would make this thing like that tall. Was, and then there's like that. a thin layer of um, crust on top. It's not really crust. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, it's crust. Yours was more crusty than I'm well, used he, to. Well, dad used to put like an egg wash on it. So it was like shiny, you know, like shiny. It was, and, thin. It was like thin and kind of soggy, but it was good. Yeah, well, um, if it sits, if it sits and, and that's, you know, that's the other thing. Like I was saying, like the... Um, it, it just doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. So I was thinking maybe I won't press the tofu. Like I'll try that and chance like, isn't the dentist is going to get really soggy? I'm like, that's what know. we have to test. We're going to find out. <laughs> We're going to find out. I'll eat the mistakes. Soggily delicious. <laughs> so anyway, I had a big piece of that. So this is what we used to do. Well, let's um, get, let's. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll go right into it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, let's that's talk about what we had. We have yeah, a little sure. bit of a, an outline here. Um, sure. But yeah, when we used to have that as like an appetizer. Now I know it sounds like a meal for those of you who like calzone or have had it. It is kind of a meal. It's like a, you know, a big stuffed pizza, you know, pizza crust. Um, but we would have it like on our hors d'oeuvre uh, table. Everybody would bring things. We're talking about growing up my dad's side of the family and he or my uncle Billy would bring this giant calzone. They were so proud of it enough to feed 40 of us, but we'd all just, you know, talk and when we got there and have a big piece of that, well, that is a meal in itself. So <laughs> that's what I did last night. Phil, I haven't had this in years. So Phil brought the calzone to my house yesterday and I dove right in and had a giant piece. It was so good. And I'm not just saying that Phil, it was, you did a great job. So yeah, good. It, it came out better than I thought originally like, yeah you know, you know just even trying it i'm like ah this might be a big waste of time i didn't know it's so shocking that sauce that the sausage crumbles first of all this is the, the key what we're trying to like teach you guys is that like when you have these components that are delicious you know like i said last week you just put them together in different ways and it's just really amazing like we already know that the ricotta cheese is really crazy good I made, I, we, I make lasagna every year with it. We love it. 
that tastes so similar to what we grew up with and in lasagna. So that's already great. Then we have the sausage crumbles that are so great. Then you just mix them all together with our really good gravy. And Phil just came up with this dough. And it's just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm back to being 12 and having calzone in grandma's kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it comes out, it comes out good. Down. And then just like I said, I mean, we, we, I would have, you know, I would have it for breakfast. I'd have it for lunch. Yeah, we'd have, again, cold, like, really the, cold. The for calzone breakfast. was probably two feet, you know, long and probably a foot wide and like three inches thick. So, I mean, even yeah. unless we were making it for Christmas, and we had 40 people over. Uh, if I just made it for something, uh, yeah, we'd have it for, uh, we'd be eating it for a week and every day, oh, like, loved, looking forward uh, to having another piece. I loved having that in the fridge, the leftovers. It was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> and it's one of those things where, and we were just talking about this last night with Frank, was, you know, what I typically eat it cold or room temperature as opposed to hot. You know, there's not, there hasn't Frank been, likes it warm. Yeah, and you can, and I've, I, I have done that. I've popped it like back in the toaster to crispy up the bread or whatever, but uh, yeah. typically I'm just eating it right right out of the fridge. Like I, I know it I sounds like it. weird, cold, but it's good cold. And there are some things, and I'm, I'm sure everyone has their own little thing or whatever. But uh, some food, you know, I mean, I like gavadils. I I would eat those out of the fridge. Man, that's I would like not eat the, those cold. One of the few pastas that I would eat. No. I would eat ravioli cold. I mean, not a huge plate, but I would like a couple know, bites. Like, grab, okay, I have a some, couple bites cold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've done that before. <laughs> Well, so and I would eat a whole meal of coal. Like, I would not I, eat a meal like, of gnocchi coal. Did you say gnocchi? Oh, gavadels. Yeah. So also, I know, you know, if you go to a restaurant and get calzone, it's definitely different. Typically, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever seen it this style. Usually it's like pizza style with like mozzarella yeah. and sauce and whatever, you know, sausage or you know, pepperoni well, that, or. Yeah, like but that's style. what I think of when you go to a restaurant and you get it. It's like a, it's a real doughy. Right? That's yeah, what I'm yeah. picturing. I haven't it's had like it. It's folded in like a half yeah. moon almost, you know. But yours was a little more doughy than I'm used to or crusty because I feel like dad's and Uncle Billy's real thin. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, he rolled it out. And, and yeah. really, I mean, I could have, well, again, I have a ton of dough left. I made a whole dough recipe and only, you know, the, cal the calzone I made was, was around tiny. high instead of like this massive thing. Oh, you should pull it up. We have pictures of it. Uh, um, I don't have those queued up. Oh, okay. All right. The regular meals. Shoot. Those are, well, we posted them today. If anybody wants to see it, it was really cute. And I would just say, yeah, we'll tweak that. We'll make maybe it a little bit thinner on the top, but the dough was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. No, it. it was great. It was great. I mean, it, it's, it tastes great. And I do like it. Like I like that. I don't know. I like the crust because usually I'm eating that with something too. So even like with gravy, yeah. I like to dunk it in the gravy. I like, like, it's almost like a breadstick on the edge. You know, like I like, yeah, I like I, and that's true. Maybe just thin on the top, but I, I did like that edge. That was, yeah, I, could, I could definitely make the dough a little thinner itself. And, little and the last time I made it, it was thicker than that. It was like a quarter inch thick. And I was like, mm, it's really bready, you know? So then I, it's I, really filling. You I, can't have two or three pieces. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so, so Phil brought that, and he also brought a delicious eggplant lasagna, which it is so fantastic. It's the same thing I just said. It's stuffed with the ricotta, ricotta cheese. Uh, you tell him what else. Just layers of uh, the red red sauce, like ba a basil gravy or basil red sauce. Uh, the um, you know parm, the walnut parm. Mm. Um, eggplant and the uh, cheese and I did make did I make no I did all sausage uh, I was going to do half and half the thing was so small wait but, you did uh, a you did oh you did like a sausage layer uh I I, yeah well I just kind of sprinkled it in. I didn't mix okay. it in oh no uh you know what I did mix it in the um the lasagna oh we're talking about the lasagna never mind because Amelia it. said you should do a meat sauce like that yeah uh, yeah, we, yeah, we could. Yeah, I, with that, that would be good too. Just like we do the spaghetti bolognese, we do a meat sauce. Right. I love right. that. I love that, that. would be good. Yeah, with the mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. And then I, I do put fresh basil kind of in those layers as well. So it's like sauce, eggplant, the cheese mix, the, the sausage, basil, then it sprinkling was amazing. in the farm. And then I do the whole thing over again. So then I had a giant piece of that because it was so good. And then that was before we had any of the things that I made for Thanksgiving. And that's, this is kind of how we do it. It's like, 
you know, Phil and I have been cooking for the last couple of weeks for the Thanksgiving menu. And so I, I kind of stayed away from that food because we had made it, you know, a while back. We've been testing it this whole time. And then in this last week, we were really tweaking everything out. So we a had a lot of Thanksgiving food. Frank is like Thanksgiving. Frank eats, he's so awesome. He just will eat any leftovers anytime and every night. He's like, leftovers, leftovers. <laughs> I by last week I was like, I can't eat another Thanksgiving type meal. You can have all the leftovers. But I, you know, by the time Thanksgiving rolled around, I mean, I made um a turkey seitan roast. I'm saying it like, you know, uh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, Satan, how fancy, like, so like, stay, like, stay fan. <laughs> oh, it's Stefan. <laughs> okay, so it's called Satan. I think, I'm pretty sure that's what I've been calling it for years. Satan. Wait a minute, you think you've been and correcting Phil me. is calling it Satan. And I was like, ooh, Satan. <laughs> So Maybe fancy. that's what we'll start calling it. Have he our calls own. it so much. Now it's in my head and I'm calling it sat Satan. Satan. So I made a turkey style Satan roast and it was good. It was just, it. yeah. So it's just, you know, like the texture is kind of like we both, Phil and I both wanted something to seem like turkey, you know, a little texturized with sage and onion. It was really tasty. And then I made a really good um, mushroom gravy to go over it. So that's what I made. I made the seitan. I made the um, mashed potatoes with mushroom gravy. And then we had already had that green bean casserole a bunch of times. So we skipped that. I made two kinds of Brussels sprouts. Um, one that were was plain roasted. And then the other, my daughter really loves that balsamic glaze. So I made a really good glaze. It was just balsamic and coconut sugar. And it glazed up really well. I had really never done that before. But I made the mistake of roasting them in the oven too long, didn't you think? They kind of turned into mush. They felt well, they were all kind of, I mean, even when I was looking at the picture, I was just like, this one, this one doesn't look so good. <laughs> what is that? Did I did I eat that? They kind of reduced, they were delicious, but they yeah, were, they, were, they, they were reduced good. and they looked like it was like all kind of dark, but uh, yeah, they were good. We had a pan this big and it reduced down to like, I don't know, it kind of all fell apart. I, I cooked them too long. Oh, well, the other ones came out great. Those were plain. Um, and oh, the cranberries. Yeah. The, the cranberries that was in the, that were in the meal plan. Those were really good. Just a little, I like having a little bite of those on the side. And then I had gotten because of in our CSA the last couple of weeks before the Thanksgiving market, we had a double basket and I had a ton of sweet potatoes and butternut squash and carrots. So I just cut them all up, threw them in the oven. So we had that as a side dish, um, roasted vegetables. And then my daughter, because my dad used to love, is this just a Caruso thing or do you guys do this? She loves um, peas and onions, just green peas and onions mixed with mashed potatoes. So whenever I make mashed potatoes, even on Thanksgiving, she's like, can you make peas? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's literally an onion sliced up and a can of peas. <laughs> but you know, it's really good at mashed potatoes. <laughs> and I, I, that's the way I eat it. Chan doesn't like it that way. And, and she loves peas, so but, she always... Shan, she, like Shan loves peas, but she doesn't like them. She just likes them steamed plain. Uh, so like when I make them, yeah, she's like, do we have to have the onions? I'm like, oh. that's, the, that's what makes the peas great. She's like, yeah, I'm soaking in the juice of the onions. Like, I was like, that's how you make them. Right. I, I don't think I've ever had them just steamed plain. Yeah, I mean, we never I had them like know, that. But yeah, I, I like them way better with the onions and everything. So well, especially mixed into mashed potatoes. I know. Yeah. Yeah, they, I don't know how she does not like that, but I don't think she even mixes them in the mashed potatoes. To be honest with you, but I, I do where, remember I Dad doing. Dad used to do that when I was little. I didn't think that was good. I was like, I just want butter on my mashed potatoes and salt, and he'd be dousing them with peas, mixing it up. But they are hey. so good. I used to do it with corn when I was a kid, when I was little, uh, not, not I, pea. I didn't even, I didn't like peas when I was real little. And then later it was just like, yeah, they're at pretty good in the mashed potatoes. And then I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'll have peas of mashed potatoes. And they're pretty good in pasta too. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, 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 pasta. I'm still not a huge fan of that, but uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're not? I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't really make that myself, peas and pasta. Oh, I love that. Oh, peas yummy. Patty loves it too. Okay. What else do we have? 
cranberries you mentioned the cranberries yep just mm -hmm. from the meal plan they're so super tart i don't know if anybody somebody made them i saw somebody made them mm -hmm. somebody posted about it yeah they're just really nice and tart you could make them sweeter if you want to add a little more maple syrup but it's just nice especially with like the seitan turkey you have a seitan yes i said it right seitan <laughs> um <laughs> you have a little bite of that tart it's really good and kind of good on a sandwich. I did not have a sandwich yet today, but I'm going to make a, a good sandwich. Maybe for dinner, we'll probably have leftovers. Oh, and then my niece, Amelia, if you're watching, honey, she made these um, delicious cheesecake, little mini cheesecakes. And she was like, I followed the Smarty Plants way, meaning she didn't add any oil or anything processed. And she made them herself. I'm not kidding. This kid has been baking since she was like this big. And she's really good and it's so sweet because she made the crust, the filling and the raspberry topping. She made all three components of these things and they were so good. I wish we had a picture to pull up. Did we did we put a picture in the I didn't even take okay. one. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take Oh, well, I still words. have some left. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, cuz they cuz they laughed like we all this, you know, and again, that's one of those things where it's like we just ate this huge meal. It's like, "All right, dessert time." And it's like, "Oh my god, like <laughs> I literally just finished eating dinner. Like I can't possibly stuff more dessert into me now." And but that they were leaving. Me. I wanted them. Yeah, the two girls were leaving. Uh, they, they both had other uh, other plans. So, uh, yeah, they just wanted to have dessert, but I didn't think to take pictures before they left, so I didn't take any. Well, we're going to, um, I want to make them and put them in our plan. So we're going to be making them again soon. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were good. And, they, and they're and the, and the reason we made them, I mean, the reason we made them, she's always heard me talk. My mom used to make, Hey, no, no. My mom oh, used to yeah. make these little cheesecake bites. It's very similar, but she used like Nella wafers, you know, uh, she didn't, I don't, I, I, were they no bake? I don't know if she baked them or not. Um, I think she did. I think she baked. I think she baked them. Yeah, yeah I remember. But they were that. a little more cheesecakey. You know, these yeah. were like dad's cheesecake style. Like it was kind of in between almost. But and then she would yeah. use like a can of cherry uh, pie filling and dollop that on top. And man, we used to pound those things down. Man, I used to make those. Really I would good. eat twenty of them. I mean, I love those things. It was like half blueberry, half half cherry. Oh, right. Like, they were so. I thought good. mom made those up when I was little. I was like, oh my god, she's so creative. <laughs> And then I started seeing them at parties. I was like, I thought they were so special and cute. I was like, how did she do this? She made tiny little cheesecakes. With it's in the back of the wafers. cream cheese wrapper. <laughs> I know. They were good. They were kind of her thing back then. They were good. Um, so anyway, she made those and those were so yummy. And then she also made um, Trader Joe's pumpkin muffins, right? Is that what they were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because my daughter it. can't eat the, the cheesecakes. The little cheesecakes had nuts in them, I think, in the in the um, yep. crust. Yep. So that was so sweet, too. And so she just, instead of making another thing from scratch, she just made my daughter, basically, these pumpkin muffins with, like, a plant-based, like, a cheesy, creamy cheese. topping. Yeah, cheese, like cream cheese. Frosting. But, yeah, those were plant-based. And I tried those. Those were yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, they were good. Those were good. Those were good. You, you did have the leftover pumpkin bread. I had a piece of that. I that did. Was, that was very good. Super moist and delicious. Super and moist. I mean, so many people have made it. Uh, you know, that's that's. They know the pumpkin bread is good. Bread I love is. it. So yeah, it was great. That we had a great time. A lot of great food. I hope everyone out there had you know, made some of the stuff. If you're a meal planner, even the 28 day people, if you made some of the stuff from the meal plan, I know we had posted uh, you know, some of the recipes. Hopefully that helped some people out. We'll definitely do something similar for the uh, Christmas menu as well and have kind of a plan uh, if anyone's you know, doing, I'm not, you know, with the group, I had mentioned, we're going to hold off for, you know, for December. So there, there isn't going to be a group running on Christmas, but we'll try to do something similar if someone is doing uh, the, the kickstart during the holidays. I know on their, on, on your own, I'm not sure how many people would ju jump in, in the midst of holidays, but uh, we'll try and do something uh, similar for that as well. So I did, um, oh, well, well, let's go over the, uh, just that the weekly meal plan that just dropped today. Oh, yeah, this is an exciting one. Um, Let me get, I'll, I'll get that up. So we all probably have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> and Phil and I were like, we just kind of want some lighter meals this week because I don't feel like cooking. I am really cooked out. Ugh. That Thanksgiving meal, I started at seven. I'm not complaining, but it's a lot. It's a long day. And Frank was working all day and my daughter was with her dad and I just had, you know, it's a lot of cooking and I cook every day anyway for the meal plan, testing and retesting and coming up with recipes. So 
sometimes I get, even though I love to cook, I get a little bit like cooked out, burned out with it, especially Fridays. I just want to like not cook on Fridays, you know, because yeah. it's, it's our long day. Um, so this meal plan is really light and really easy. And we thought like, let's lighten up a little bit after a big, heavy, you know. Um, yeah, another thing that we want to say is like, you guys don't have to keep up with these meals like these. This is not the kickstart where everybody's doing them together. You know, if you're part of the meal plan, the problem is it, it's not a problem, but I know it gets exciting because you have all these meals you want to make and then here come crab cakes. You know, for me, that's exciting because I loved crab cakes when I used to eat crab. And like when you see your, the, these foods that you haven't had in a while, if, if you've been eating this way for a while, it is exciting. It's like, you know, somebody said, you put, you gave me Caesar salads back. Like we made a Caesar dressing that is so good. It's like, I have Caesar salad back and that's how these crab cakes are to me. I've been wanting a crab cake for so long, a plant-based crab cake recipe, have not been able to perfect it until I got Julie in the mix and she did it. And it's like, you know, once when she made these, it was like, uh, I felt the same way. I have crab cakes back in my life. And it's funny because I always put this disclaimer when I make food, like I give my neighbor, my neighbor eats a lot of our test recipes. So I think I had him test the pump, uh, the, not the pumpkin, the pot pie at one point. And I always put this disclaimer, like, remember it's cause he's, he's vegetarian. He's not vegan, but he also eats oil and stuff like that. So I just always say like, remember it's plant whole food, plant-based, no oil. Like you cannot expect just this. Just like last week. To taste what? Just like last week. Did I say this already last week? No, I'm saying you're okay. telling him just like last week. No oil. Oh yeah, I think I do tell him that every time, <laughs> and he's nodding and like laughs, smiling at me, and I'm like, it's not going to be like that light and fluffy, buttery crust. Like I don't want people to think like we're trying to, like, is this close? Is this close? It's it's its own thing. But it's really funny because I put that disclaimer when I give it to him or other people that come over. But then Julie said this to me when she first gave us this recipe. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so, she said, the crab cakes are so good. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. You know, I want these back in my life. And then she's like, they don't taste exactly like crab cakes. <laughs> and it just cracked me up because I know that, like, I do know that. I'm not expecting that. And so that's what I want to say to you. Like, if you love crab cakes as much as I do, you are going to be extremely happy with these. But it's not like you're eating lump crab. I mean, <laughs> that's its own thing. You know, what we, what, and I talk about this in the Kickstart, it's a flavor combination. So our, I don't think necessarily I'm craving the crab. Maybe, I don't know. We really loved crab, like the actual taste of the crab, but it's really like the old bay seasoning that's in there. It's like the old bay, you know, that, that crab boil flavor, whatever it is, the smokiness of that seasoning. And then the, um, the, scallions that are inside and then the remoulade sauce is like the mayo and it's like um a combination um there's like some pickles in there and onions and the combination of all these like salty smoky creamy savory and then that's well that's what we want really and then when you um you know make the hearts of palm they kind of flake up uh, you know a lot of people kind of experiment with this with these crab cakes um, but it's really nice. It's like, it, it gives you that texture that you want. So it's all about those flavors and textures. And when you bite into these, you're just like, oh, that's just yummy goodness, you know? And no, if somebody was sitting there with a crab cake or, you know, actual crab net, you know, next to him, we're not trying to do that, but I am satisfied. Like she satisfied my crab cake love with these. <laughs> so that's kind of what I want to say about all the meals, because when you think about what we're doing here, we're using whole plant foods to create these beloved dishes. And we are doing no harm to our bodies. Like we're putting all plants in our bodies and we're nourishing ourselves and we're getting super satisfied with these meals. I mean, it's just, here I go, Phil. <laughs> this is when my daughter is like, zip it. <laughs> But I, I, I'm still amazed by this, like a meal. I mean, look at those beautiful things. It is just so good and so satisfying. And I hope you love them as much as I do. Okay, <laughs> enough of the crab cakes. They are good, they're delicious. <laughs> so delicious. Oh, shoot, I lost you again. I made everybody small. Come back. Okay, there we go. 
Um, all right, so, oh, the tabbouleh, quinoa tabbouleh. So tabbouleh is one of those Middle Eastern salads that um, it's, it's kind of like a side salad when you eat Middle Eastern food. Um, yeah, like, what am I thinking? Like, I guess pita pockets, Where? how is it served usually? Like as a side yeah. salad yeah, to like hummus and yeah. yeah, like any, I mean, you could usually get it on the side. I usually but, throw, throw it into like a, a, right into a pocket or, or, or on the side of like a, you know, a falafel plate, you know, it'll be like tabbouleh salad and, and, you know, whatever the baba and, and. Right. And I wrote that in the recipe too. It's like, we have, um, our falafel, which I, again, just like the crab cakes, same thing. It's not deep fried, it's baked. Um, I love our falafel so much. A lot of you have had our hummus, our favorite hummus, which is so good. So just mix a bunch of these things up together. And if you have a whole wheat pita pocket, stuff it with some soy curls, like chicken style soy curls, our favorite hummus, this tabbouleh is fantastic. It is that, so good. Um, the chicken shawarma. No, the soy curl the shawarma, shawarma, shawarma. Yeah, that, that, that stuff's awesome. So like, that's how I always think it's like, you know, what would be good in this is that shawarma or, or right, the falafel and have some hummus on the side. <laughs> like, so the idea is when you good. make components that are this good, like this isn't just throwing some parsley and a handful of tomatoes into a pita packet. Like each component is so delicious that when you put them all together, it's like fantastic. You can't even believe it. So when I first made this, I don't know, now it's been at least a year. I don't know how long ago it's been a long time, but it was just like a little kind of like a side. And I could not believe the flavor in this one because a lot of people have been saying this lately about our sauces. And I'd say it all the time. It's all about the sauce, but it is so true. And Julie is fantastic with these sauces. And I wasn't expecting this back then to be this good, but this simple little tahini dressing it's so crazy good. It's like five ingredients. It's not our lemon tahini that we have on the site. That could be a free recipe. I'm not sure right now, but this is even more simple. Just like when you go to a Middle Eastern um, restaurant like Pita Inn in Evanston, that's one of my favorites. You would get the little white tahini sauce on the yeah. side and a yeah. little um, hot sauce on the mm -hmm. side, which I would love to replicate that because I love that stuff. I don't even know what's in there, but um, this is just a simple little white sauce. So what we do is we drizzle it into this and we lightened it up instead of the bulgur wheat that is typically in uh, tabbouleh. Quinoa is just really light and fluffy. And so it makes it really nice and light. So when you mix it with that light dressing, wow, the flavors are just so good. So yeah, this would be a great one. I put it in the recipe, you know, to put it, have with what we said, our pita pockets, falafel, our hummus. Um, just really a nice salad. I'm getting a taste for it right now. <laughs> oh, shoot. It's funny. This is what we do. We talk about food all day and then we have to make it. This is, uh, you wanna... <clears throat> I'll just notice it. Um, I guess that's all I want to say about this. I mean, it's pretty, I'm looking at the ingredients right now. I mean, it's, there's nothing crazy, nothing new, nothing, no new ingredients. Um, I use the uh, Italian flat leaf parsley. We use that almost exclusively. I don't know when we'd ever use. I don't think we ever use the curly parsley, do we? Uh, I don't. Really I don't, I don't think I've ever bought it. No, I don't <laughs> think yeah. I do either. <laughs> oh, I know what I want to say. The one other thing is, yeah. So the recipe says cooked quinoa. So mm -hmm. just you know, quinoa is so easy to make. I just threw it into the recipe notes. You know, it's like one and a half cups of water with one cup of quinoa. That's it. Um, and you'll have a little leftover. Because when you mix it, um, mix it with what the intended, like with the measurements of the salad, you might have a little quinoa left over to do whatever you want with it. But um, yeah, it's all measured out perfectly. And uh, you could make your own quinoa or you could even use frozen. I mean, I do that with a lot of recipes. And, you know, if you're going to make a quick salad, you're like, oh, I want to try that. I don't have time to wait 30 minutes for my quinoa. You know, I just always have a, a bag of frozen quinoa and frozen um, brown rice in my freezer because it's so easy to throw this together. So, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that one. Last but not least. Someday we'll be able to answer comments. It'd be fun to have people ask questions while we're doing this, <laughs> you know. A little hard, a little distracting. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> okay, so... 
who doesn't love a burrito? Oh my gosh. I love burritos. And what I love about these, and I'm going to just say it first, they're so nice to just wrap and make a bunch of them, like double this recipe, wrap them up and freeze them. I mean, I just love having burritos in my freezer to just zap in the microwave and especially a burrito this good. But the most exciting thing about this one is we have a brand new cheese sauce. Hey. <laughs> um, another one of our flavor bombs, our smoked cheddar cheese sauce. And it's really, really good. It's silky and it's um, it's got like a hint of smoky to it. And it's it's a little bit more orange than this photo here. I I mean, our, mine comes out a tiny bit more orange. So it looks more cheddary and um yeah, it's just got a really nice mild flavor with a little bit of smokiness. It's super good. And um, that's going to be one of our new cheese sauces that we will be putting in different things that, you know, whatever we like cheddar in, we're going to start experimenting with it. But it's new to us too. And we love it. It just works so well on these burritos. Um, so the interesting thing about these, which I love, so whenever in the past when I would make burritos, I would just, you know, do a make plain rice, do a layer of rice, do a layer of whatever I'm putting in beans, a layer of this, that. Well, in this burrito, what we do is we put everything into a bowl. So we use like pinto beans and brown rice. Again, with the brown rice, you could cook it yourself or you can use frozen. Um, tomatoes, cilantro, onions, everything, throw it into a bowl and then add a little of the cheese sauce into that and make it like a nice consistency. I don't know why I just don't cook like this. And Julie always surprises me when she, she does, you know, she's a chef. So she does things like that, that are like, that makes so much sense because you're flavoring the entire filling. You're not just making layers, right. you know, again, you're creating a delicious <clears throat> component. Um, yeah. So basically that's what we do. Um, and the cheese sauce, after you mix it all up with the filling, the beans, the rice, you know, whatever else I just said, throw a dollop in there, mix it up. Then when you layer it on your burrito, you do add another layer of cheese sauce on top. And I think I say drizzle it on, but it's not a drizzle sauce. It's a little bit thicker. So really just, you know, take a scoop of the hot sauce and just kind of, yeah, just kind of drizzle it down, but it's a little bit thicker. Um, and I like making this cheese sauce right before the burrito because the, you know, as soon as you whip it up in the saucepan, that cheese sauce is perfect. Yeah. And then you can just, you know, it's just so nice to work with. You just put it in your filling, whip that right up, drizzle it on your burrito before you roll them up. If you make it um, ahead of time, and I do have it in the meal plan notes, you certainly can. It's just that, you know, after, if you've made our cheese sauces in the past, it's going to get like um, like thicken up in the fridge and get kind of not, I don't want to say rubbery, but kind of rubbery. It kind of just kind of coagulates. I don't want to say rubbery, but kind of rubbery. <laughs> I don't know what else to say it. They know they've made these. It's just what happens. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then you have to thought, I mean, not thought, you have to um, you know, heat it back up and add a little water to it. So you just have to go through that step. If you want to make it ahead of time, you'll save time. But just know, don't use it cold out of the fridge because then you're gonna have to have like chunks of it. It won't be good. You have to heat it up, get it to that really nice consistency, heat it up, and then do the same steps. Um, and you're going to love it. It's so Other delicious. It's crazy taco good. Taco Tuesday uh, experience. What was that? I said I'll have another Taco Tuesday experience. Oh, my God. I know. And that's the exciting thing. Um, I love and the grilled, other grilled thing, burritos. two more things about this one. We're making our own taco seasoning because I just love the idea that you know what's in your food. We always want to offer that um, option to you that you can make this stuff yourself because anyone can run out and buy a taco seasoning packet. I have some here. I mean, in a pinch, they're great to have around. I don't mind using them. It's just that you can always make your own if you have all these spices. So, I mean, I have like a fully full on spice cabinet because I'm going through them all the time. So I always have these taco seasonings and it's just nice. It's nice to make them yourself because you can make our verse. So I have it all listed in the recipe, you know, the, all the taco seasonings, there's like seven of them, I think, cumin, paprika, garlic, onion, you know, and then you can taste it and add what you like to it. Oh, maybe I wanted a little more garlicky or I want a little more smokiness or salt, you know, whatever. It's nice. Sometimes I buy that taco seasoning. It's so super salty to me. Yeah, I know. 
So I don't really, I like making my own, but obviously you have the option. If you want to skip making your own, it takes two seconds. You could buy them. Back. Well, yeah. Well, you also save money. I mean, you know, unfortunately yeah. you go buy these spices. I mean, some little spices, it's you know, four, six, eight dollars, depending on what you're buying a jar that everything bagel seasoning. I had almost everything oh, yeah. here to make it except for like black uh, sesame seeds or, you know, whatever. So it's like, if I buy one jar of black sesame seeds, and that, 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 that like the little thing of everything bagel is like, uh, I don't know if it's five bucks or four, five, six bucks. I'm like, man, for that little jar is yeah. five dollars. Like I have everything now. I have to say though, spices are expensive. Yeah, I know. Sometimes some of them are I, just outrageous. Like I you know. run out of something and I'm just like, do I have any left? I just, I don't want to buy another six dollar spice. <laughs> do you ever have, to, like, do you ever have to buy saffron? It's like, what? Oh, it's like no. those things are like gold. It's like we're not going to be making so anything with saffron. <laughs> Don't touch those. That's the saffron. Don't go What's to in the here? Saffron. Yeah, so, so I mean, just even Holy like vanilla cow. bean. So I said, like I, we were mentioned last week about vanilla bean. Like, yeah, I mean, it's so good. But man, you go to buy it at the store, it's like two beans, and it's like fourteen dollars or something. Like, I'm not paying seven dollars for really? one bean crazy Whoa. you're crazy you know, well you know what else is expensive now maple syrup yeah that's another that's one gone up. like 11 I, bucks for a jar, a jar. Now that <laughs> i need i need that on hand so i have to spend the money but whoa. i hear you that is and i wish costco had like a doubler i mean it's it's cheaper at costco i definitely get it for you know less but uh still expensive i mean you know it's, it's like three three dollars less but still i'm just like nine dollars for a little jug of it uh and then the other thing is Try to find whole grain burrito um, tortilla, uh, sorry, tortillas, burrito size. You can find them. I mean, I don't know. I see tons of tortillas now. Just in the last six months, I see like cassava flour and, um, you know, all these different whole grains, almond flour, and I don't know what else. I mean, just, I don't know, garanza bean flour, but you can find them and they're big, they're giant. So look for those because don't try to roll the tiny ones. You can't roll them. You can't roll burritos. <laughs> I've tried. Um, it's challenging. You could, but it's really challenging. And then your stuffing's falling out. Even with these, I started with burrito size. Well, I like to really stuff them because I want one to be my meal. I don't want like a dinky little burrito. So I really stuffed it and it was tight, but it, it worked. It, it, you know, it's fine. Um, well, and a good trick if you are like, you know, uh, um, you know, browning them, you know, we have like a, a griddle or whatever I put them on, always put the seam side down first and that'll kind of lock that in. Yeah, and then I just kind of turn it like, you know, like an, I would say not quite a quarter turn just because I like the whole thing to brown, but like you could just keep turning it and it'll sit and then you turn it a little, it'll sit and all the oh way around. Oh my gosh, I just did flip, I just flipped mine. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah that, steam side is nice because it locks everything in. I like to go all the way around. Nice crispy burrito. <laughs> they are good crispy, but that I little know. crunch when you cut into them. Oh, yay. And you don't need any oil. It's just a hot pan, put them in, and they turn golden crispy really nicely. No oil needed. Uh, and oh. then you will have, um, if you make, well, when you make the smoked cheddar cheese sauce for this, you'll have more on the side. So you could dunk them in. We like to make chips on the side and eat the sauce with our chips. So that's really good. It's like a queso dip, you know, experiment. We were putting salsa on top, slices of avocados, you know, yeah. it just becomes your own kind of, your own creation. Sure. But I think you guys are going to be really happy with these meals. They're super tasty really easy and i can't wait to hear how you like them <laughs> <laughs> so on the heels of that so the, with the weekly meal plan i know there's there's questions and, and and things pop up just about how, how to use a meal plan as judy's mentioned it's not really designed to be hey here's your three meals for the week the idea is we're just giving you more options and the idea is for you to kind of customize your own menu. So whether you're a person who makes one meal a week or if you make seven meals a week, the idea is you can add as many meals in as you like. So I just wanted to just real quick, just run through um, just kind of the process here, just so people are kind of familiar or, you know, you, you, you know how to kind of use it, whatnot. So when you come to your dashboard, if you have the meal plan, you would just click, click on the continue meal plan. Right off the bat, you'll be, you'll be brought to this week's recipes, which will highlight the three that we just launched. And then these will stay here till the following Friday. 
Now, right below is going to be last week's meals. And you can see there, there was more than, you know, there was more than three. So I added a, a few extra on here just to show. Obviously, we had, I think we had nine, but I didn't want to keep adding it into here. Um, so from here, you kind of just get an update of what's been happening this week's. And typically, there's three and three, but you'll have this week's and last week's. From here, you have the sub navigation once you're in the weekly meal plan, which has your recipe box, your meals, and your grocery list. So the recipe box is going to show you everything that's in the recipe box. So this is, and it'll start with the most recent. So here's the three that we just put in. And then this goes into last week's. Here's all the Thanksgiving recipes that we put in last week, all the way down here, down, 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 down. And then this one starts with the next previous week to that, you know, so it just keeps going. So you can, let me just jump back. You can add things to your own meal plan from this screen. You can see it says add to meal plan or from the recipe box. You could add them right, oops, you could add them right here. Or if you're actually on the recipe itself, you can add them right here. And then what you do is you just click on that. It's gonna ask you what day you wanna add it to. And then I'll just have all seven of the days for this week. And I'll just, I'll just uh, I think I, uh, I can't remember if I added this one in. I should have looked first. I'll just pick a day and then just click add to meal plan. And now it's gonna take me to the meal plan. So it'll show me what I, add. yeah, I did add it already. So, I'm, well, it's on twice now, it'll uh, be down here somewhere, there it is. Um, so whatever you add. So you can see I've already added a bunch of stuff in here. And then from here, whatever you've added on is gonna create your grocery list. So everything that I select here for my meals for the week is gonna be different from anyone else. This is my personal customizable plan. And again, I was just throwing things on. So it's not like I'm eating mushroom broth on day four. What are you having on day four? I was testing it the other day. So I mean, just because it was an issue and I was running through, just added some random things. Uh, so your grocery list is just comprised of all the meals that you've selected there. On here, if you have stuff, you can check them off. So it kind of crosses it off your list so you know that you don't have it. And then over here, it'll just show you what this item is for. So you can mouse over that and it'll say, this is for the mushroom broth at time. This is for uh, a half a cup of rice for the pico de gallo. You know, so it'll, it'll show you exactly what those recipes were for. So it just kind of gives you an overview. But it's, it's not really designed to say, hey, these are your three meals for the week and make them. Um, it's, it's always for you to kind of customize yourself to make your own plan. So I know someone had just said like, oh, I, I already bought the stuff from last week. I, I didn't get around to making everything. That's fine. There's no rush to make things. You can also save things uh, and, 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 and go back to them. You know, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to make these things every week. We're always going to have more, especially with like that Thanksgiving menu. I mean, it would take you you know, a, a couple of big hearty meals yeah. to make nine different things or 12 different things with the components and whatnot. So when you go to the recipe, recipe box, everything that we've ever offered since day one is there. So just know that they're always saved. And then did you point this out once before the, um, the favorites, if something looks good to you, save it to your favorites. And then you'll have your own page of your favorites could be like plan to make recipes. So you're like, oh, I want to make the burrito and I'm going to make the crab cakes and I want to make those pumpkin spice balls, you know, all the stuff. And you could just go to it. Do you have a favorite? Yeah. So yeah. So I just, so when you're in the recipe itself, it just has the little heart. So when you click on the heart, it's again, that's yours. So that's going to add to your favorites. Uh, not, you know, not, not anybody else's. Uh, sorry, I'm to the wrong thing. There so the favorites are in the recipe box itself, all the way at the top here. So favorite, and so he has saved all. These are all Phil's favorites. So you so can like see that. he maybe oh so maybe he didn't make the old fashioned stew yet, and it's now he saved it. So you'll have a whole page, and you could say oh these are my get to meals. Like what do I want to make next week? And with that with that grocery list, we just have the days set out like that. Like, honestly, I don't really do that. I just think like, I want to make bolognese. I want to make lasagna and I want to make the pizza next week. Okay. You know, I click, 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 and they're all added to my grocery list. That's what I, that's how I use it. But I know if you want to plan your whole week, that's what it's good for. You know, I want to make the banana bread on Sunday. I would do this if my, you know, like our mom is coming in for Christmas. I would do that, like plan my week just so I have that grocery list done for me. And I want, those are, those are nights where I know I want to have specific meals because I'm always trying to make 
our best <laughs> meals for, you know, when they come, because I want to show them everything we're doing, the meals they haven't had yet. Right. So yeah, it, it's a great plan, but sometimes you just want to have, you know, oh, I'm going to try these three meals. I just love this favorites page because well, I go well, back also, to my favorite page like every day. Well, right. And, that, and that's the whole thing. So like things like the provolone sauce, I make a lot. The nacho yeah. crema, these are things I make a lot. You don't have to search for it or anything. Right. You don't right. have to remember. My favorites right. right there. But again, if, you know, if, if you're just looking for stuff, you go in the recipe box, we do have uh, the search tool so if you know if you have something that you that you're looking for so whoops i'm just going to put tofu in here when you search it's going to show anything that has the word tofu in the recipe so obviously all these will come up it's all this is all basically a recipe search but that's really handy because sometimes i can't remember exactly what we called it right right but I you, you know the word tofu's in it so if you called it something that's wrong, like if we called it crispy tofu and you're like, I want to make the crunchy tofu. If you punched in crunchy, it wouldn't come up. But right, I, we'll get keep it. it as basic as possible. Yeah. And then, and then we do cat, kind of categorize things as well as much as we can. So if you are just looking for kind of dinner ideas, that's where that that's where this kind of comes in handy, where you can say like, you know, let show me all the dinner things that you have on there. And uh, you know, I mean, now there's, I mean, there's hundreds in here now. You know, it's, we keep building it up and building it up every week. New recipes go in. So you go back. I mean, you can go back to the beginning and see all these all all these great recipes that you know we put in months ago as well. So I love when these pop up in the private group when people make things from the past it's like yeah. oh my gosh i love it i love to see that they are enjoying food we made so long ago so with the um with the meal plan too every week you know friday when we announce it we send out an email to every all the subscribers i just I, you know after there was an issue with the emails getting admin i think it's all under control i made a post today and nobody responded which is perfect it just said is anyone having a problem with the email and nobody was so it's like i oh, good no no news is good news in that you know that situation so if you aren't getting it for whatever reason just you know shoot it shoot me a message or, or, or post in the group and i could look up your account sometimes people unsubscribe unknowingly uh, sometimes they forget sometimes they join the they, they got the newsletter they don't want to see the newsletter they unsubscribe but then join the meal plan but the system showed that you unsubscribe so they don't want to send you an email so we can get it all situated but that not only does it show the meals being announced but it also gives you the prep for this these three meals so if you didn't want to prep some things you know that that um, download is in there as well so um it's not just launching the uh you know not just uh announcing the uh, the new recipes so Keep that in mind. So, in my yeah, eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so it, today is Black Friday, so I don't want to wait to the very end. We're getting we're getting close to the wrap up here, but uh, so we are. I'll just go through real quick. Uh, we did want to offer some stuff for Black Friday. Um, so there are going to be two distinct different uh, offerings this week, or for uh, for what for this weekend, I should say. So this will apply from now till Sunday night at at eleven fifty nine Central Time CST. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to offer the Kickstart for free. If you want to get into the Kickstart. We'll, uh, we'll give it to you for free uh, this weekend only. So come Sunday night at 11.59. We want all of you to experience the Kickstart. All of you who are watching who want to experience it who haven't. So that will include... It'll include all the recipes of the Kickstart. If you've been watching, you know, the groups going through, we are going to be doing another group in January. So if you want to plan, we're going to do a new year's resolution group. So if you want to kick the year off, right, and really get a good start, wait till after the holidays and all that, that's fine. Once you've kind of registered saying, you know, Hey, I want the Kickstart. You can do it whenever you want. You don't have to wait to the group. You could start Monday if you wanted. Um, I'd like everyone to join the group. I mean, the groups are fun. If you've been part of our group here, uh, the Smarty Plants private group, you, you've been seeing people post. You've been seeing people do the Kickstart and having fun and posting their recipes and all yeah. that. If you've been through the Kickstart, you, you, you already know. Uh, if you want to gift uh, a, a subscription to somebody, that's fine. Uh, you know, I have, I have, we have no problem with that, but it has to be in. You have to request it before midnight. Now, if you say like, hey, I want 50 of these for, for 50 of my friends, eh, we, we might we might hold off on that. But if you have a gift or two you want to give out, that's fine too. Uh, you want to give someone the gift of health for Christmas and you want to get, get it right now, that's fine. So right now, the only way for me to do it uh, without you using a credit card, just the way our system is designed, is a credit card has to get put in. So the only way to get around that is for me to set these up manually. So if you do want the Kickstart, 
you need to post below, just in the comments below, just write, I want the kickstart. That's all you have to write. I'll contact you and I'll set the accounts up. I, I'll just talk to you if you wanted one or two, or if you want it for someone specific, we can exchange the information. Uh, so just post it in the comments. That's all you have to write is I want the kickstart. If nobody posts, nobody get before Sunday, <laughs> nobody, nobody gets anything. So it is a good way to get, give a gift. If you want to give someone a gift and or someone you know is interested in and they're not part of our group, they can certainly do that. Uh, but you have to post by Sunday night, uh, 1159. After that, the Black Friday weekend is, is over and everything's back to, there are coupons on the site still, we'll leave those up. Uh, so that's the Kickstart uh, Black Friday deal. So remember, Sunday night, 11.59, has to uh, write the, I want the Kickstart below. That's we'll just write the, it, we'll write it. Can we write it in the notes? I will, I'll okay. write it in the, I'll, I'll write uh, in okay. the comments when I'm done. Uh, for the uh, meal plan, if you want to, if you've been reading about the meal plan, you've been seeing the recipes and you want to get in, uh, involved in that, same deal for the, uh, not the same deal. What? <laughs> We didn't, as far we as, didn't okay this. As far as redemption, it has oh. to be redeemed by Sunday night, by midnight. But we're going to do the meal plan for only $10, and you can get it for up to two months. So if you wanted to do it for one month, you can order for one month and cancel. If you want to do it for two months, it's going to re-subscribe uh, you after the one month. Yeah. Uh, but it'll only re uh, redo it for 10 bucks. But you'd have to cancel before the second month is up, or it's going to rebuild either way. Uh, for that, there's a coupon code. Uh, it's going to be, and I'll put this in the notes as well. Uh, it's just uh, Black Friday 21. Uh, you use that on checkout and you'll have uh, $10 uh, for the whole access, everything there, all the meals, you know, all the new recipes for the next month, the Christmas, the Christmas whatever we're calling it. <laughs> Extravaganza. <laughs> Extravaganza. Uh, you get for all two months, for two months for $10, yeah. So, because again, you guys are all part of our month. group and we want as many of you to be a part of this as possible. So hopefully we'll, you know, you guys will come, come and be see a what, part of it. What it's all about. <laughs> all righty. So um, I just wanted to, I did want to get some questions. I know I had put some questions out and a bunch of people ask questions. We keep kind of bumping them because the show runs long. We like to talk. So I did want to get to uh, just a couple of the questions. Um, so one of the questions was from Sandy LaCroix. Uh, she just asked, she actually had a couple. Uh, she just wanted to know what we thought of ready-made meatless meats that are already kind of prepared. So I'm assuming she's talking about Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger and, you know, all, all that uh, kind of um, pre-made, uh, you know, fake meat or, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, I've had, I've tried a bunch. I mean, I, you know, when we go out, typically that's one of the options that we can get. So I have had, and I got to say, like, I mean, Impossible Burger, I mean, out of all of them, it's delicious. I mean, I, I love it. The problem with all those meats is they're heavily processed and they have a lot of oil in them. I mean, if you make them yourself, you can tell. I mean, the pan is full of oil. So it's like, man, when I make those things, it's just like, as I, as, and again, it's not something I make all the time. For instance, if I had a barbecue and I got some buddies, I know I invited my brother, my brother-in-law and my brother over for hamburgers. Uh, I, I made those, you know, I wanted yeah. them to eat a burger uh, without saying like, you know, I had to be, you know, this isn't beef, but I also didn't want to make beef either. So I made those and I had one, they each had one, they loved them. Uh, but yeah, it's not, uh, they're not super healthy. That's for sure. It's better than eating meat. Right. I think so too. They're not healthy. I would never say they're healthy, but I a hundred percent back these products because it's anything getting us away from the meat, you know, into purchasing things that taste like meat. No, they're not, they're not healthy, but they're still better and they're, they're tasty, you know? And so I think, you know, I'm all for it. And as a tr uh, transition food, I ate those before I started eating whole food plant-based, like we're going back eight, nine years ago. That was my, my vegan food that I started eating. I was buying those burgers. I was buying the Earth Balance and the um, Just Mayo and all those oily processed foods because they really helped me. So I don't want to poo-poo those foods because if you're new to this and that's going to help you eat this way, by all means, eat that stuff, you know? And then you can like slowly wean yourself off of it. And there is something to your palate changing. You know, I, I could taste it in the last night in our pumpkin bread and the muffins, like the muffins, they were tasty, but I could taste all the oil and sugar. 
and I love the pumpkin bread without it, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm just saying like your palate does change and you don't, you start to like not even really want that oily stuff anymore. So, you know, you do have to kind of give your palate a break, but to transition, if those are gonna help you, I am all for it. But her question was, do you think they're healthy? No, I don't think they're healthy. Yeah, they're yeah, they're definitely they're no. definitely not. And you could and again, I mean, I I I, I would tell anyone just read the package because obviously, in the you know, kind of the vegan food, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of oil and a lot of things. And, and her other question was about cheese, the dairy free cheeses that they sell. Same thing. Uh, they're they're primarily well, I don't know if they're primarily oil, but there's a lot of oil in those. And yeah. I'm not a huge fan of the dairy free cheeses. I mean, I've had, I've, I've tried a few, I got to say there, there's a pizza place that we go to that they, they have it there and we do get it, you know, and geez, I, mean, I, yeah. I haven't been there for probably a year now, but uh, that's probably, and I don't even know what brand they use, uh, but it's really good. <laughs> it's really, it's really good on that pizza, but I I bought it here. Like when the kids, it's like, Hey, let's try dairy free cheese. And uh, yeah, just some about it. Some of them taste kind of I don't know if it's metallic or medicine or just something like, you know, chemically, I, I don't yeah, know. The, it just doesn't I don't, I'm not a fan of that diet cheese. Um, yeah, any yeah, of those that's, that's, that you buy that's already yeah. shredded. I, I just, even when I first started eating this way and I was buying those products a lot more, I was like, oh, I'm not, I don't like this cheese. That was way before I knew I could make my own delicious nut cheese oil free, but I, I would like stay away from those dairy free cheeses. Dairy, yeah, dairy free. I was like, did I read that right? Um, because I just didn't like them. Like you said, it they tasted like chemicals and just not not good. But there are some high end um, cheeses that dairy free cheeses that do have oil that I would like to try. I mean, um, what is it? It's I'm part of a I'm part of a cheese Facebook oh. group. This That's cheese is nuts. This cheese is nuts. That's what I, I love that name. First of all, Sri Mati makes this cheese and it's like a cheese club though. And it's really kind of pricey for my budget. So I've never tried it, but if anybody's tried it, can you let me know? Because I wish I could buy like one piece, uh, you know, just to try it, but I'm sure it has oil. I don't know. I haven't looked at the ingredients, but that is some, you know, expensive dairy-free cheese that I'm sure is delicious, you know, and it'd be nice to try that if you buy like, if you're having like a holiday charcuterie board and you want to have buy one of those i would try that and that's that's usually where i try it if we're having company and, and stuff like yeah. i'll put i'll put a block on you know, on, on the board or whatever just to have like a, che a spreadable right. cheese or something like that the problem with that that i have is you know just like anything else uh you know it's like hey here's this product that's not really that good for you it's plant-based though uh, I love it. And that's like, oh, I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy that. You know, then, you're, then you're saying you're, you well, love whoever. it. I, mean, oh. I, I do fall into that sometimes where it's like, yeah. I love it so much. I want to keep buying it. And that, 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 that turns into the problem. Then, right. then you just turn into buying all that processed, you know, kind of vegan junk or, you know, vegan yep. food that has a lot of oil and it's highly processed. So I do try not to have that. Uh, again, it's a, an occasional thing. I, I think yeah. it's fine, but in the end, uh, the more you eat that, then your palate starts changing. It's like now, now it, wants the oil no, you that's know, so right that is exactly fine. what happens and the sugar is the same way you're you just you get addicted to it again uh so yeah so i would i would you know if you do use it right for transitional foods i would use it sparingly but again i would just read the labels on everything and see see what's in there and sometimes i'll you know i'll be like oh this looks good and i'll be like oh yuck it's yeah. like man there's some weird stuff in there like i don't even want to eat that so I would just say, read the yeah. labels and see what you see, what you're eating. That happened to me recently. I was going to buy something to just, you know, for us, not for the meal plan. I was just going to speed it up. And I was thinking it wasn't like a salsa, which you could pretty much count on there, be, you know, nothing being in salsa. It was something else. And I thought, oh, I'll just, oh, I think it was baked beans. Yeah. It was this summer. I was going to like, I don't know, like we had a lot of people coming over or whatever it was. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll just pick up a can. And I always read the ingredients. I flipped it over. I was, <laughs> who knew There's all this stuff, in there. this many things was in a can of baked beans. I thought it might be sugar. I mean, there was a lot of stuff and I just couldn't buy them. I was like, wait a minute. I could easily make these. We have it on our site. Like, what am I thinking? So I have my moments. <laughs> Uh, so Mary Ellen Lincoln, uh, she asked, uh, I'm having a hard time getting used to the taste of nutritional yeast. Well, I will ever get used to it or like at the flavor, any suggestions. Nutritional yeast is just one of those things. Uh, I remember, I mean, before I was even plant-based, I remember you, you told me about that 
so I bought some just to see what you it was didn't know like. what it was. I didn't know how to eat. So I, I ate like a spoonful of it. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know about this stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> what, what would I be eating this with? Like, I wasn't sure. So it sat here for a yeah. long time. I do like it now. I mean, I, I, I mean, I could eat a spoon. I, not that I would, but I, I could eat a spoonful now. It turns into like a thick paste in your mouth. But uh, yeah, I do like the taste now. When I'm using it in recipes, I don't, I guess I don't, I don't eat anything. It's like, man, you could, unless it's like sprinkled heavily, like avocado toast, if I sprinkle it on top. Yeah, of course the flavor I'm tasting that directly, but when we use it in a cheese sauce or things like that, I don't think I bite into it and think, boy, that's really nutritional yeasty tasting. You know, like I, I can't equate it that much when it's just a tablespoon or, you know, in a dressing or something like that. Well, even in our almond parm, it's a significant amount in there. And I don't, it, it just, to me, it just tastes cheesy. So yeah, the way, like Phil said, the way we use it is, is, is an ingredient in a sauce or in a, you know, whatever, a cheese, whatever we're making, we aren't really tasting it. Like if I had a spoonful of nutritional yeast, I would not like it, I don't think, much. And when I first started eating this way, I didn't like it. Same thing with you. I tried it and I was thinking, oh no, I'm never going to be able to cook this way because I don't like this. It was in one of my cooking classes or, or forks over knives or something. And I was like, why is everybody? And I joined these vegan groups and everybody was talking about this stuff. And I was thinking, I'm never going to be able to do this because I don't like this stuff. So that was me. And now it's like in everything, you know, um, as a, an ingredient, which makes it cheesy tasting still to this day, I'm not going to, I wouldn't, I typically wouldn't just put nutritional yeast. I know people use it as like a sprinkling cheese. I like the almond parm. I like to blend it with something. It's just too too strong of a taste for me, but people love it. People do eat it like that. But I think Mary Ellen, who asked the question, yeah, you're having a hard time getting used to it. I think she said, will I ever get used to it? I think if you try some of our dressings and our cheeses, just, just do that. Try a couple of recipes. Don't try it on its own and you know, see what you think. And you could um, send me a DM and I'll give you some ideas if you want to. Awesome. The uh, la- uh, well, one of the last ones, we'll, we'll start wrapping it up here soon, but uh, it says, do you, do you think the kind of blender you have makes a big dis- difference when preparing sauces? I have a friend who swears by the Vitamix, but it's costly. Yeah, blenders do make a difference. Uh, I have a horrible blender and I don't use it, uh, but I bought a little Ninja, just a small one. And again, it's not the volume it can't take, you know, mass volume. It only takes like whatever it is, four cups or something like that. Uh, But just the speed of it, you know, blends things smooth. My blender, you know, even on the liquefy setting or whatever, still won't break down like cashews into like a cream, you know, like it just not that powerful. Problem is sometimes we. Yeah. Sometimes we see like people posting their pictures. They're like, mine didn't come out so smooth. And we always know it's like, you didn't use a high speed blender because it's kind of grainy. That's the thing. You don't need a Vitamix. I mean, I have a Vitamix that's like 10 years old and mine is on the blink now that that's really sad because those are expensive. I'm trying to hold on to mine. Um, but it's, it's kind of going, um, but you don't need a Vitamix. You just need a high speed blender and you just do to make the sauces and the dressings because, you know, you don't want them to have the little bits of nuts. They're so nice when they're smooth and creamy and delicious. And like the, all the, all the nut cheeses that we make, you kind of do need a high speed blender to make that stuff, not to eat whole food plant-based, but to make some of our food. And it, it really takes it up to the next level, you know, these sauces and these cheeses. So I would say, you know, just shop around and just buy one that you can afford. There's a whole bunch of them. You don't have to get a Vitamix. Well, and, and I, you know, and again, unless, and, and I don't, I was never a, a big blender guy. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what I would have used that blender for previous to doing this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Margaritas, maybe. I don't even think we did that because it wasn't powerful enough. But I, I mean, I got by with that little ninja. You know, there wasn't really, the only thing that I, that was a problem was the first time I made the broccoli soup where it's like, oh, I got to put it on and I'm putting cup oh. after cup and I'm blending this, I'm putting it in another pot. And then I'm like, oh God, I have an immersion blender. It's like, why didn't I just use that? So I have it, you know, or a stick blender, emergent blender. Yeah. So uh, that worked perfectly for the soup. So now I just do that. I go right into the pot and it's done. I don't have to worry about it. But I, but yeah. I mentioned last week, my uh, Ninja just burned out. So I use the immersion blender with the cup that came with it. So the immersion blender actually hugs the edges of the cup. So nothing really gets by. Everything goes in. 
Wow. Yeah, I, ma I made like, uh, I, I blended anything. I made like you know, a couple of dressings this week. So that worked. Wow. I wouldn't use that all the time. It's not, it's not something I would just keep using. Yeah. I just haven't gotten to the store to get another little ninja. But you can, like I got by very easily without, with just using that ninja. And I think that thing was like, I don't know, 80, 70 bucks, 80 bucks. It wasn't 300 bucks or three something like those Vitamixes are. But again, sometimes, you know, when I see Judy make, it's like, man, I wish I... <laughs> I wish I had that blender, but uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. Not, I'm, it's I love Christmas the Vitamix. Soups. It's nice. It's powerful. And it's really, really nice. And you can make soups, hot, cold, freezing thing. I mean, it's just so versatile and it's worth the money if you can afford it. Um, I don't know. I kind of need a new one, but <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. But I would say I can it, afford a new one. I'll always go to Amazon and, and read what people are saying about it. Because sometimes it's like, oh, this looks nice and it's cheap. And then you read the reviews and it's like one star review. And it's like, this is horrible. Don't buy this product. Yeah. So sometimes cheap isn't always the way to go. And sometimes, yeah, you put a little bit more money and you get a halfway decent one and it's you know much better than uh you know than than the cheap one and not as expensive as you know as a Vitamix or something like that. But uh, the last question was, someone asked the seat. Oh, oh okay. I saw her last night. Oh, oh. Did, did Miss Paisley make an appearance? Look at that little Paisley baby. Paisley pie. Ooh. Yeah, I just woke her up. Oh. So if anyone out hears these live and you hear, she's a little grunter. I don't know if you could hear her. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's really loud <laughs> that's what sometimes when i'm talking about. to phil and he's holding her and i don't realize it and i hear these little snorts and grunts i was like what is he doing it's like oh i'm holding paisley <laughs> she snorts like a little piggy mm -hmm. oh, sorry. she's a cutie oh. little oh, warm belly disrupted her sleep <laughs> for us <laughs> all right well that's we're at a time here we had a good uh, good talk <laughs> Friday at yeah, four. Friday. Let the weekend start. Man, that, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Jesus. <laughs> dry, dry throat now. Yeah, yeah. You got any uh, quick plans for the weekend at all? You doing anything exciting? No, me. No. Um, well, my daughter's here. Hattie's still here. So yeah. actually, right now we might run over Evanston's having this little um, Christmas market. So. Mm. Those are kind of fun. It's freezing nice. outside, but we, it's, I think it's indoors. Yeah. So I think we're going to run over there, see what we can get today. And then I don't know, just hang with her. Um, any time with her is good time. <laughs> my, <laughs> my daughter's time. in as well, but I think she's going, uh, she's going out with her boy. I think they're going to try and do some Black Friday, uh, you know, shopping or whatnot tonight. So what are you going to do? I'm going to play some guitar. I had some friends Ooh. over the other night, a couple of friends over the other night and haven't had anyone here. <laughs> I've been like a recluse for, uh, for the year. <laughs> so it was nice to have, it was like four people or whatever. We just had a couple of, you know, pre, pre holiday drinks, but, uh, yeah, just going to play some guitar. Yeah. We'll probably do family night tomorrow and make some food and play some games and hang out. I think she's leaving Sunday morning. So same yeah, here. relaxing weekend after all the crazy holiday stuff that's been going on for the last I couple know. of weeks. I'm not going to be cooking much. That's what I'm not going to be doing this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm cooked out for the for the most part. Although you know, you know what I'm going to do tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually Friday we don't cook a lot. We try to do just snacks and, and things yeah, like that. Sometimes we make a cheese or tofu cubes and we'll make some dipping sauce or whatever. But I do have the leftover lasagna and I was thinking, geez, if I throw some pasta in, I'll just make pasta and then just mix that right in there, like a pasta oh pasta that sounds so and, good oh i can do that i have the that. Yeah, leftovers yeah, leftovers. Too. Yeah. little galzone on the side yes mm. Mm -hmm. see that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna eat the leftovers your leftover <laughs> all righty cool all right everybody we'll have a safe uh a safe black friday if you're out there shopping don't forget the coupons and the black yeah. friday specials if you have any so questions you can post them below but Sunday night, you have all yeah. weekend. Buy a nice Christmas presents, holiday presents. You don't For celebrate sure. Christmas. All right, cool. All right, everybody. You guys take care. Jude, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Have all a right. nice weekend. We'll see you. See you later.